Flint has a cultural center, the Vehicle City, not a single public high school left in this town. The downfall of Flint started way before the water crisis. Parking for residents only, eh? Well, the only resident left here is this cat. Flint, Michigan, one of the most troubled cities in the United States. Let's go check it out. Today's aerial coverage of Flint brought to you by the Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl, 8 p.m. Saturday. What? Okay, all right. Well, anyway, it was August of 2022 when I came by and got these drone shots of downtown Flint. Most people know about Flint these days through the media coverage of the recent Flint water crisis. Some might feel that the event saw too much coverage, but Flint combined with the state of Michigan kind of did that to themselves, and we'll talk about that in a later video within my Flint series. We'll talk about other things too throughout this series, as there's a lot more to Flint than just the water crisis. This particular video will be my first in my nine video Flint series, and in this video we'll take a tour of downtown Flint and see what the vehicle city has to offer. Downtown might actually surprise you. I mean, it's not anything too glamorous, but if you're not from here and if you've never been here, you might be expecting to see a bunch of rundown slums or abandoned buildings with boarded up windows everywhere or something like that, but no. Nah. It's actually pretty decent. Well, let's get to it, shall we? Where I start the tour of downtown Flint is near the Cultural Center. Meanwhile, if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like for the amazing insights, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. And if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Hey, the date says September. I thought you said you visited in August. I'm here all day, every day, baby. Flint, Michigan needs me. I'm their hero. I usually make those. Told ya. The first thing that we see in Flint's Cultural Center is the Buick Automotive Gallery and Research Center, which is currently closed for repairs, but you can go see what would be in this building over at the Cortland Center Mall on the far east side of town. Yippee! Because we all want to go see the Cortland Center Mall, right? Nope. Well anyway, its display has over 30 automobiles representing a cross-section of Sloan Museum's vehicle collection. The collection includes a variety of vehicles from concept cars, trucks, and classic cars dating back from the early 1900s all the way to the 1980s. Something that you'll learn very quickly about Flint, if you don't know this already, is that it's called the Vehicle City, just like Detroit is called the Motor City. And it might be hard for some of you to imagine, but Flint was way more dependent on the auto industry than Detroit ever was, General Motors in particular as the only reason that Flint was ever able to grow early on into a decently sized city was through the jobs that the auto industry brought with it. And we'll talk about that throughout this Flint series. When you think of company towns in the industrial landscape of the Midwest, Flint might as well had been the poster child as General Motors employed over half of Flint's working population during its peak when it had nearly 200,000 residents. To the left, we just passed the entrance to the Applewood Estates, which was owned by Charles Stewart Mott, often referred to as C.S. Mott. When he passed away, his wife wanted to make sure that the estate was open to the public. 
Mott helped form General Motors. He was also the mayor of Flint three different times, and throughout the early 1900s, he helped evolve Flint from a town of 13,000 to a city of over 100,000. Flint eventually became a model U.S. city, and it was one of the wealthiest cities of its size in the country. There's also a foundation called the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation, which has donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to local colleges, museums, and parks. While this street is like an outdoor museum in its own right, to the right you have the Whiting, which can seat over 2,000. It's also home to the Flint Symphony Orchestra. And directly across the street is the Flint Repertory Theater, which adds some extra arts and theater space alongside the Whiting. Next in line to the right is the Sloan Museum of Discovery. Inside, you have an 11,000 square foot space dedicated to classic cars, as once again, automotive heritage is a huge part of Flint's history. You also have a lot of kid-friendly exhibits, making it sort of like a children's museum. Not to be confused, though, with the Flint Children's Museum on the opposite edge of downtown. And directly across from it is the Flint Institute of Arts, and it's the second largest art museum in Michigan after the Detroit Institute of Arts, as this one has over 8,500 art objects inside, with the oldest showcases dating back to the 15th century. They also have an art school associated with the museum, and they claim that it's the third largest museum-connected community art school in the country. Well, there's even more to the Flint Cultural Center, as to the left is the Flint Public Library, and across from it to the right is the backside of MacArthur Hall, or the Flint Institute of Music. You can think of the Flint Institute of Music as being the main home for all of the arts and culture for this community, whereas the theaters that we passed by earlier is where they all perform. So, this building is the main hub for the Flint Symphony Orchestra and the Flint School of Performing Arts, among other groups. Altogether, the Flint Institute of Music claims that they have an impact on over 300,000 people through their programs, and hopefully they do as this community seems to be a bright spot in an otherwise economically depressed area. Straight ahead is the FCC Academy. No, not the Federal Communications Commission Academy, the Flint Cultural Center Academy which is a charter school that serves 300 students, and it's able to use all of the nearby amenities to its advantage to help students learn and grow. To the left past this light is the old and now abandoned Flint Central High School. Upon closing in 2009, Flint Central was the oldest school building in the city, as it was built in 1923, and now it's been abandoned for 13 years and counting. The school closed due to declining enrollment numbers. At its peak, Central saw 2,000 students, while seeing only half of that during its final year. The most notable alumni list of Flint Central includes former Major League pitcher and Olympic gold medalist Jim Abbott, singer and American Idol contestant Lakeisha Jones, and Home Depot CEO Craig Manier. Despite the Flint Cultural Center being a really positive light for the community, it has the ugly shadow of this abandoned school sitting behind the impressive art gallery. And it's a reminder of the conditions that we see throughout most of the city. 
During the peak of the Flint School District in 1968, there were more than 47,000 students that attended the schools within the district. Today, there's only just over 3,000 students left in the district as schools continue to close throughout the city of Flint. To illustrate things more drastically, there are three other school districts in all of Genesee County that have more students, despite Flint continuing to be the largest municipality. To go along with this, there's not a single traditional public high school left in the city, as the only school left in the Flint School District that serves grades 9 through 12 is the Flint Southwestern Classical Academy. Well, back to where we were, as there's one last thing to talk about within the Flint Cultural Center, and that is the Longway Planetarium. You know, the giant blue bubble that you see here. The planetarium is named after Robert T. Longway, who also has a main thoroughfare named after him through Flint. Longway was the vice president of Buick and served as the president of Board of Regents of General Motors Institute, which is now called Kettering University. And he also once served as the president of the Cultural Center. Longway helped open the planetarium in 1958 through six-figure donations. Despite the planetarium being fairly old, the city has continued to make efforts to maintain the planetarium through consistent renovations over the years, and the website claims that it continues to be Michigan's largest and most technologically advanced planetarium facility. Well, we've spent 12 minutes in the Flint Cultural Center to start this video, and now it's time to move on, as we're passing by the old Flint Central High School, and we're on our way to Mott Community College, which is named after Charles Stewart Mott, if you recall, who once again helped organize General Motors, and earlier we passed by the Applewood Estate, which, once again, is where he lived back in the day. Mott Community College is one of three downtown area colleges in Flint. Mott was established as Flint Junior College back in 1923. In 1950, C.S. Mott donated $1 million to make Flint Junior College a four-year college in collaboration with the University of Michigan. Mott also donated 32 acres of farmland for a new campus, which is where we are currently. Mott's donation of $1 million also created the cultural center that we already saw, and it also helped create the University of Michigan Flint in 1957. And that school was established on this campus before moving to its current location in the 1970s. In 1969, Flint Junior College was renamed to Genesee Community College, and then it was renamed to Mott in 1973 after C.S. Mott passed away. All right, well, as we now head towards the heart of the city, let's go over the economic stats for Flint, Michigan. The city saw a peak population of 196,000 in 1960 before plunging down all the way to seeing an estimated total of only 80,000 today. Meanwhile, Genesee County didn't start losing population until 1990 when it peaked at 450,000 the decade prior. That tells you that the city is doing a lot worse than how the county is doing altogether. So, even though the Flint metro area is seeing a decline in population overall, judging how well the Flint area is doing by only looking at the numbers for Flint itself would be a bit of an exaggeration as it's not doing quite as bad as one might think. Anyway, the city itself is doing just as bad as one might think as the median household income is only $30,000 per year, which is not even half of that for the typical American household. That results in a poverty rate of 37%, which means that more than one out of every three people that lives in Flint lives in poverty. The median value of owner-occupied housing units has to be among the lowest in the country for a city of this size, if not the lowest. And despite having three colleges in and near downtown, only 12% of adults 25 and older in Flint hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and 
That data only makes it harder for the region to attract new jobs as companies want to see a sizable talent pool of college graduates when they look to hire new workers. You can see that the numbers for Genesee County overall are much better than what the numbers are for Flint, but with that said, they still trail the state and national averages by quite a big margin. Meanwhile, this is the Central Park neighborhood of Flint, which is one of the few neighborhoods that aren't completely dominated by blight. Reasons how this neighborhood has been able to stay intact is likely due to its proximity to the Cultural Center, Downtown, Mott Community College, and U of M Flint. When it comes to crime in Flint, it's been a major issue over the years, as many of you know, and we can talk more about crime in my other Flint videos, but currently the crime rates are the best that they have been in a long time. Even though the violent crime rate is still four times the amount of the national average rate, that just shows you how bad crime in Flint has been over the past several decades. In the past, Flint often saw a violent crime rate of 2,000 for every 100,000 residents, which is on the same level as other cities such as Detroit, St. Louis, and Memphis. Well, the plan for this day was to drive straight ahead through the campus of U of M Flint, but you can see the cop car up ahead blocking off traffic as I think there was some kind of outdoor market going on on this day that had several streets closed right up ahead, but this is U of M Flint. The college enrolls about 6,400 students, and among the most notable alumni includes Lakeisha Jones, again, and filmmaker Michael Moore, who directed the documentary Roger and Me, among others. Roger and Me came out in 1989, and in it, he illustrated his opinion on how General Motors neglected the city of Flint. Well, let's talk about some of the history now. Flint is an old city. Very old. In fact, it was first founded as a village in the year 1819 by fur trader Jacob Smith. By the late 19th century, Flint was a sizable community as it was able to grow due to its geographical location being about halfway between Detroit and Saginaw. Flint was also able to grow through the lumber industry, which was huge across much of the state of Michigan, as Michigan was basically a huge forest back in the day. To the right, we just passed by the YMCA and across the street from it is a newly built apartment complex. Well, as the region had an endless supply of lumber, that led to the Durant Dort Carriage Company in 1886. And by 1900, Flint produced more than 100,000 horse-drawn carriages a year. That's more than the amount of people that still reside in the city. But in 1903, the Buick Motor Company moved from Detroit to Flint due to the growth of the carriage building industry in the area. The following year, it was William C. Durant who was in charge of the Buick Motor Company and in 1908, Durant helped consolidate Flint's manufacturing industries into what we know today as General Motors. And man oh man, what do we have here? Someone driving the wrong way. <laughs> Moving on now, it can't be emphasized enough how big of a role General Motors played in the economic growth of Flint. Today we know of Flint for the unfortunate water crisis and for being a rust belt city, but back in the day, it was one of the best cities to live in the country, mostly because of General Motors. The birthplace of GM was in a building that still stands today, and I'll show it here since I'm talking about it, but I'll also be passing by it later. It's called the Durant Dort Factory, and it's where the original two-wheel road cart was built by Durant and his business partner, Dallas Dort. Today the building is open as an event space, and judging off of the pictures from the website, it looks like it's a really cool spot. And it's great that the building has been able to avoid being demolished by the city.
Well, Flint's glory days never lasted for very long, as there are many various strong opinions among the locals as to why GM left town. Or maybe it's not strong opinions necessarily, but more so strong feelings. In case you didn't know, General Motors over time ended up owning several recognizable car brands. Today, the brands that are left include Chevrolet, Buick, Cadillac, and of course, GMC. Well, back in the day, there were brands like Pontiac and Oldsmobile, Saab and Saturn. All in all, there's been 43 different car brands that have been owned by General Motors. GM used to be the largest automotive company in the US, but today it's Ford. Not by much though. GM, however, also used to be the largest automotive company in the entire world until it lost that title to Toyota back in 2008. It's still a very large company though. It's ranked 25th on the Fortune 500 list of 2022, but today, Regardless of how big or small the company is, it doesn't have much of a presence left in its hometown, that's for sure. The GM truck plant still sits on the west side of town, and there are still a few parts factories owned by GM here and there on the outskirts of the Flint metro area, but for the most part, GM has bailed from Flint, Michigan. To the right is the site of the former Chevrolet plant, often referred to as Chevy in the Hole. At its peak, this GM factory employed 8,000 workers. You can see here a picture of the Chevy in the Hole plant. As you can see, it goes down into a hole and then it's basically inside the Flint River Valley, so that's how it got its name. If you're wondering why the Flint River is in this man-made trench, it's because back in 1963, the engineers made this trench as floods threatened the Chevrolet factory, so that is why the trench was made to help reduce the risk of floods. Here's a potato camera Google Street View shot of this street back in 2008, and now 2011, and now 2017. And now, back to today. The site is massive as it stretches for 60 plus acres along the Flint River just west of downtown. Chevy in the Hole was built in the 1930s and it was one of GM's four major production facilities in the city of Flint. The complex consisted of 17 buildings, but eventually in the 1990s, after years of layoffs, demolition began on some of the buildings. By 2004, demolition of the site was complete, and upon completion, a layer of asphalt was paved over the site to help minimize the movement of soil that was contaminated. This is Buick City, which is another massively abandoned GM site in the city of Flint. You can see here that Buick City still has the layer of asphalt laying over the former site, and Chevy in the Hole used to look just like this. The site remained as an eyesore for about 15 years until funds were able to be put together to form what is now Chevy Commons Park. This is a part of the project that the city calls Imagine Flint, which focuses on creating connected green spaces along the Flint River. The idea came to formation back in 2013, and today, the entire site has been transformed into this. You've got to admit, it's really impressive to see the transformation. It helps make the surrounding neighborhoods more attractive, along with the campus of nearby Kettering University, which is where we're heading next. And we all know that Flint could use anything to make their neighborhoods and the city more attractive. 
the new Chevy Commons Park does exactly that, so you've got to give credit where credit is due. To the left up ahead is Kettering University, which has a very small campus. Kettering is a private four-year college, and it was originally called the General Motors Institute of Technology, which further illustrates how much of a presence General Motors used to have in Flint. The company and the college split up in 1982, and in 1998, the name changed to Kettering University after Charles Kettering, who once was the head of research for General Motors from 1920 to 1947. Today, the college has an enrollment of about 2,300 students, and it continues to be known for its engineering program. Among the most notable Kettering University alumni includes people who you probably wouldn't know, as there haven't really been any celebrities or famous athletes, actors, or actresses necessarily. Rather, the list is made up of a handful of people who were able to climb the corporate ladder through General Motors many of those being graduates during the 40s and 50s. As time has gone on, we have seen fewer presidents and CEOs of General Motors being alumni of Kettering. However, the college has seen alumni become presidents and CEOs of other companies as well, such as Sun Microsystems, Fidelity Investments, OnStar, and even rival automotive companies such as Toyota and Ford. So if you're young and you're watching this and you want to be an engineer or a president or CEO, of a company if that's your life goal, Kettering might be a good college for you. Heading away from the college now as to the left is the Flint Children's Museum. Following the museum is the Durant Turi Mott Elementary School and it might look like an abandoned school. A big portion of the building might possibly be abandoned because it does look like it, but it is an open school. Currently just heading back towards the downtown area of Flint on University Avenue, which is on the north side of the Flint River. There's a lot of university fraternity homes and sorority homes off of this stretch. And here's the street view of Atwood Stadium, in which I showed the drone shot of the stadium earlier. Among Atwood Stadium being the home field for Kettering University, it's also home to the Flint City Bucks, which is a soccer team that was founded in 1995. Originally, it was called the Mid-Michigan Bucks, being founded in Saginaw until a move to the Detroit suburb of Plymouth in 2004. In 2008, the team moved to Pontiac, and since 2019, the team is called Atwood Stadium in Flint, their home. The team is a minor league affiliate of the Columbus Crew. Well, now we're on Flint's main drag heading south. Sitting across from these abandoned buildings to the right is the Durant Hotel, which was built in 1920, and today, it's a historic landmark. Today, the hotel has commercial space on the first floor, with the other floors making up 93 lofts, and the building's website claims that their drinking water has continuously tested negative for lead and copper. The water crisis is over in Flint, 
but the paranoia of whether or not the water in Flint is safe to drink continues to be a thing. With a building like the Durant feeling the need to say that their water is clean front and center on their website, it's just proof that the paranoia is real and that unsafe water continues to be what people think of first when they think of the city of Flint. Unfortunately, that will probably be the reality of the city for a very long time, as it's hard to erase something like that from your mind, especially knowing what it can do to your long-term health. The Durant faces Flint's iconic entrance into downtown with the words Flint, Vehicle City, sitting on top of the Iron Arch. Iron arches span the length of Saginaw Street on its stretch through downtown. These arches are actually fairly new to Flint, as originally the arches were put up along Saginaw Street in 1899 to help decorate the downtown business district. They replaced the gas lights that were up there before. The arches were manufactured by Genesee Ironworks, and they held 50 light bulbs each, as they were all placed at intersections. In 1919, the arches were taken down upon the order of the city council so that the street could be more automobile friendly. At the time, the city said that it was necessary to tear them down in order to install traffic lights at the intersections. In 2002, with help from the Genesee County Historical Society, new arches were put back up along this street. Meanwhile, you can still see that downtown Flint is full of shops, bars, and restaurants, and if you're not from here or if you have never been here, that's probably not what you expected to see, as negative headlines have dominated Flint for most of our lives. To the right is the First Presbyterian Church, which sits across the street from St. Paul's Episcopal Church, and that's followed by the Masonic Temple. To the right here is the Genesee County Courthouse, followed by the Genesee County Sheriff's Office and the Genesee County Administration Building.
The rest of Flint's downtown streets are rather unimpressive and underwhelming, as it's mostly just parking lots and older homes turned into offices. However, there are some interesting buildings here and there, and I'll point them out as we go along. The church on the right is the Court Street Methodist Church, as it's at the intersection of court and church. To the left is the Flint Federal Court Building. Maybe this building became really handy when they were putting the ones in power at trial over the Flint water crisis. Don't quote me on that, just guess. Here you can get a good view of the Citizens Bank building as what they call the weather ball sits on top. The building was recently purchased by Huntington Bank and you can see the letters HB representing that. The weather ball was first implemented in 1956 and will light up at night in a certain color to provide you with the current weather forecast. Red means warmer temperatures, blue means colder temperatures, and yellow means that there will be no change at all in temperature. When it blinks, then there will be either rain or snow. There's even a jingle that's been written on what the colors mean, and while you're sitting at home in your lame city jealous over the fact that your town doesn't have a weather ball, Flint residents are happily singing the jingle that was written for their city's weather ball, knowing that they are cooler than you. When the weather ball is glowing red, warmer temperatures just ahead. Okay, yeah, well, um... You know what, I, I can guarantee you that all of the Flint residents are singing along to this in their Jackie Moon jerseys because the Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl is at 8 p.m. Saturday. And I bet that along with not having a two and a half ton weather ball on top of one of the taller buildings in town, I bet your town doesn't have a Mega Bowl either. Well, all right, well, moving on now, this is Carriage Town, which is on the north side of the Flint River opposite of the area of downtown that we just saw. Carriage Town is where the Durant Dort factory began, and if you recall me saying earlier in the video, the Durant Dort company started out by building carriages. It's also considered to be the birthplace of General Motors, which once again was made out of a consolidation of several automotive manufacturers in the Flint area, such as Chevrolet and Buick, which both moved their operations to Flint after starting in Detroit, mostly due to the resources that the Durant Dort company provided at the time. Lastly, we're going to skip ahead to show one final building, which is the Capitol Theater. The Capitol Theater opened in 1928 and was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1985. The theater closed in 1996 before reopening in 2016 through a $32.5 million renovation done by the Flint-based Uptown Reinvestment Corporation. During the renovation, they were able to keep the building's original look. 
The renovations also helped the theater see upgraded, modern technology to help provide good quality entertainment for whatever shows come through the theater. The multi-million dollar renovation project also included adjacent office space along with renovating the theater and altogether over 20,000 square feet of commercial and retail space saw a revamp. Today the theater is managed by the nearby Flint Cultural Center which is where I started the video. The theater seats up to 1600. With that said, I do end the video here, and make sure to stay tuned to the very end to see more of your favorite basketball star. Also I have a second channel that I have linked down below, and my goal is to get a thousand subscribers on it by the end of the year, so if you could help me out with that, I would definitely appreciate it. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Flint playlist, my Michigan playlist, or in my medium sized US cities playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace. The Flint Michigan Mega Bowl. The Flint Michigan Mega Bowl. The Flint Michigan Mega Bowl. You didn't see that. You didn't see that. I, I usually make these. I'm here all day, every day, baby. Flint, Michigan needs me. I'm their hero. I'm here all day, every day, baby. Flint, Michigan needs me. I'm their hero. I'm here all day, every day, baby. Flint, Michigan needs me. I'm their hero. Told ya. Free throws are my thing, you know. The Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl, 8 p.m. Saturday. What? Yeah! Don't forget, we'll see you 8 p.m. Saturday, Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl.